absolute special access. Today we get to enter the tomb of Maya. Stephen, please. Well, this is a chapel or a temple of Maya. Now, Maya was a title, not a name, of both men and women throughout dynastic times. This particular era is around the 18th dynasty, the time of the so-called King Horemheb. Now, the key thing here is 1997, Hakim came to the United States, to California. He and my research partner, Bob Butter, and I met him for a couple of weeks and we discussed. One of the things he discussed on a return trip to Egypt in September of 1997 would be, he said, he would show us evidence of a Mayan temple in Egypt. Mayan as in culture. Exactly. And I said, this I never heard of. No, it's not in any text. No one has ever mentioned it. <coughs> okay. We came here. This was arranged differently then. A lot of this is new construction. It was not this way in 1997. Uh, first of all, I looked on the wall. Behind you, you see that that is Maya. But it looks typically commissioned. Right. And I'm looking around, typically commissioned. All the looks. So Hakim would use the expression, well, you know, Stephen, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. He's living in Kemet. He's going to pass in Kemet. So he's betraying himself as a commission. So I said... Well, Papa, this is great, but I can't go with this in front of an academic audience. They'll laugh me off the stage. There's nothing here to identify with the culture we're talking about. Uh, but then there was a keeper like this gentleman here, was here, didn't speak any English, but saw that I was perplexed. He said, come here. This then was boarded up with just a wooden door, and it was latched in. He threw away the wooden slabs, opened the door, and he said, look up. Oh. And that is the key. Uh -huh. Took a picture in 1997 sent it to Mayan day keeper Hanbat's men. He said he recognizes this as the language of the Itza people, where is Chichen Itza. He said it's an ancient language. But a lot of people are not sure about Hanbat's men. So we went one step further. In 2010, I got to meet Dan Alejandro Sul Ojdaj. He is the wisdom keeper, the head of the Quiche Maya of all of Guatemala. I showed him this picture, and his eyes went as big as saucers. And he said to me, that is the language of my ancestors, that is a calendar. That is telling the date of when Maya was here. And how we can't read it, he can't even still read it, but he knows that the circles and squares and different colors and ranges and the spokes in the wheel are indications of a date. So, this has never been discussed by any Egyptologist. They cannot put this in a commission context. There is nothing, or maybe there is others that Yusuf has seen, but there's nothing like this in the rest of Egypt. So, Mayan elders recognize this as part of their culture. So now the key is, Maya, the word, is a title. Men and women had the title. Very interesting because we've talked about the difference between Egyptian, Arabic, and other Arabic. In Egypt, one of the key words for water is Maya. It is not sp sp pronounced the same way in any other Arabic country. If you went to Saudi Arabia, they would say Ma or Meh. Only in Egypt is it pronounced Maya. And it means water. So I asked Hakim, could the title Maya actually have meant, meant he who came from across the water? Or ones who came from across the water? He said yes. So here is what we call diffusionism archaeology, diffusionism, diffusionism anthropology, saying that there had to be cultural contact between these individuals thousands of miles across the sea. And this is the evidence that Hakim told us that there was a Mayan living in Egypt 3,300 years ago. Let somebody else define that for me and tell me that that is Carician or Egyptian or dynastic or anything else. 